well, from the time I arrived here, I could sense a kind of energized softness in the room. It's really nice. <laughs> I hope other people feel that as well. It feels very friendly. <laughs> So we'll sit or stand or even if you wish, I don't mind if you want to lie down uh, for about 45 minutes. Please don't stay rigid in one posture if that's no longer working for you. So the invitation is to really be receptive and responsive to what the body needs right now. I know a few of you may have colds or coughs. Please be responsive to that too. Don't try and suppress anything. <laughs> We're all here knowing that viruses go around at this time of year and that's perfectly natural and part of life. But we can boost our immune systems by just a little bit of meditation. So please allow the cough to be too. One of the things I love uh, that Ajahn Brahm has shared about Ajahn Chah is that Ajahn Chah reportedly said when his monks were complaining about noises in the village or in the forest, he said, it's not the sound that disturbs you. You disturb the sound, <laughs> which is quite interesting. It's like the mind is hard like a bell and you strike that bell. I actually have a bell and it resounds <laughs> many, many times, comes back again and again. Oh, they slam the door, they slam the door. They start so disturbed. But if you don't disturb that sound, it just kind of makes a dub, a thud. And it happens and it's gone. So see if you can have a mind like a padded cell. Any thought arises, it just kind of disappears into the soft corners of the mind. <clears throat> doesn't worry you too much but you don't have to chase it around so with your eyes closed it's easier to come in contact with the body and the sensations in the body And with that information that the senses provide, we can invite our body to be even more comfortable and at ease. So in particular, I often notice that my limbs may be a little bit too tightly squeezed. So giving my toes a little bit more space inside the sock. Checking that your buttocks are not pressed uncomfortably into the chair or maybe a fold of fabric that's uncomfortable under there. So really take your time to adjust because this already softens that attitude from the mind to the body, the mind that often tells the body what to do can relax. and be guided by the body itself. And asking your body how straight you want your back to be. Sometimes we don't have so much energy in the beginning and it's comfortable to be slightly slumped, that's fine. After a while, you may find the body naturally straightens up.
and checking through your shoulders, making sure they know they have the space to relax. I like to just gently roll my shoulders back to encourage that relaxation. Because we often hold so much tension there in our shoulders. Checking the position of your hands. Are your hands at ease? Do your fingers have space? so that you can feel every finger. And feeling into your neck. Maybe bending the neck, the head back and forth very slowly and gently to loosen any tension. And to find the optimal position for your neck, your head. So the head can really <clears throat> trust the support of the neck. And any tensions in the jaw, the forehead can relax. No one's looking at you. You don't need to hold your face. Allow all that tension, all that holding in the temples, in the brow to expand. Allowing the throat to relax. Clearing the throat if you have to. <coughs> and really landing in the here and now. Noticing the stability the support offered by the floor or by the chair. And inviting the muscles, the skin, to just relax as though melting, melting down and sinking into the floor. Enjoying any sensations you experience that are associated with this deepening of relaxation. Of simple mindfulness of the present moment. It feels good to be mindful.
and sensing the atmosphere in the room, an atmosphere of support and warmth, charged with good intentions. spiritual friendship, a place where you're really welcome. Just as you are, you're really safe. And I'd like to suggest beginning with a short reflection on any qualities within yourself that you really respect. Qualities of softness, such as intentions to be kind, Maybe your generosity, sincerity, your sensitivity, your ability to feel. Whatever values or qualities you recognize are present in your own heart. Allow the mind to delight in that. Maybe you think you're not good enough to have qualities to rejoice in, but It could be as simple as the intention to practice, the intention to do good. Or perhaps a specific deed comes to mind, something that you did for someone else or for yourself that softened the mind. Maybe you made someone a cup of tea. shared encouraging words. Whatever it is, just recollect that and see if you can sense how that softened the mind.
And with a sense of appreciation and gratitude towards yourself, your goodness, your commitment to truth. I'd like to just guide us in a very gentle body scan, <clears throat> using mindfulness and also kindness, compassion, to meet and respond to whatever sensations in the body or thoughts in the mind you experience on the way. <clears throat> so just bringing your awareness to the top of the head. Very gently, kindly, as though your mindfulness were like a gentle winter sun just shining down across the top of your head. bringing you in contact with whatever's happening there, any sensations, and imbuing those sensations with a sense of friendliness and warmth. Not looking for anything special, but just receiving whatever arises for you. If there's any tightness, throbbing or aching, just allowing that to be and perhaps gently widening your awareness as though the mind were like a sponge expanding, getting softer, lighter towards the edges. And this light and warmth of the sun, your mindfulness and care spreads through the face, the forehead, temples and eyes, your nose, your cheeks, your mouth. Very naturally at your own pace. allowing you to feel deeply into any sensations that arise. And relaxing those sensations. So any tensions fade away.
And this gentle sunshine spreads across, down your neck and across the shoulders. Soaking deep into the skin, the flesh, the muscles. Imagining any tensions or tightness gently expanding. As this warm, sunshine of mindfulness and kindness starts to spread down your arms. Soaking through the elbows, the lower arms, all the way into the hands, the palms. To each and every finger and fingertip. So gently, there's hardly any effort at all. And allowing this kindness to be soaked up by your chest, drenching the whole torso with awareness and kindness, the light and the warmth of the sun. Allowing the chest area to open up and receive any sensation you experience there. Maybe areas where you don't feel any sensation, just accept. Staying present to whatever arises for you, allowing your experience to teach the mind. And perhaps this kind awareness travels through areas that are painful or tight. where even more gentleness is needed, just a very, very light touch. Giving even the disagreeable sensations permission to be.
keeping the mind wide and soft. Spreading right out to the sides of the body, the ribs. Deep inside to all your organs, if that feels natural. Soaking the body through with kind awareness. spreads all the way down your back from the top of the shoulders down through your shoulder bones through the spine like melted butter just soaking through no resistance down to the seat of the trunk, to the buttocks, the hips, the thighs. Soaking into all the muscles there. Allowing the thighs to relax. Soaking through the knees, if you need any areas of resistance, just gently circling around those, not forcing through. Keeping the mind very soft. Noticing the effect of that soft, gentle touch on the body, on the sensations in your knees.
you may find that naturally your awareness starts to flow down into the shins. perhaps soaking deep into the muscles, even the calves. The ankles, and the entire foot, both of your feet. The heels, the soles, the upper foot, all the way down to the tips of each toe. As though blessing your feet with this very soft and gentle mind. No resistance, no force. And once you drenched the whole body with this kind awareness, you may be able to sense the body as a whole and perhaps notice as I do right now, any areas of pain or tension that need a little more attention from you. Maybe you're still contracting, the mind is hardening around those areas, not fully allowing them to be. So I notice I have a kind of shooting pain in my left shoulder and I'm just bathing it in compassion and care. Imagining it expanding as it soaks up this beautiful energy. And relaxes that little bit more. Sometimes old injuries or areas in the body that hurt. They're there to stay. They require our acceptance. part of our history, part of our life. 
So just see if you can really unconditionally open to your body as a whole. as though you were a mother gazing at a child with eyes of unconditional kindness, tenderness and care. See if you can hold your body, your mind, your experience with the loving concern of a mother, so tender, So accepting and kind. So I'll be quiet and allow you to practice in your own way for the rest of the meditation before I ring the goal.
So we're coming to the end of the meditation, but before we finish, just to reflect. How does the mind feel now? How does the body feel? Compared to when you began. Do you notice any more softness in the mind? How do you recognize that? Does it manifest as particular sensations in the body or attitudes of mind? What kind of perceptions Thoughts led to the mind becoming soft. What kind of perceptions, thoughts, ways of relating to your experience hardened the mind, caused it to contract? So we do these reflections not to judge our meditation, but just to learn and to help us more fully experience the effects of meditation. And allow whatever peace, softness, gentleness, happiness that's arisen for you to really soak through the body and mind. And we can end by gently smiling inward to ourselves with a sense of gratitude. Gratitude that we showed up to practice. Gratitude for the goodness of our lives. and gratitude to every part of our body. As though smiling inwardly and spreading that smile to every cell. From the top of the head through, through the whole body down to the tips of the fingers and the toes.
So in a one day retreat, a lot of us turn up with tiredness and just want to really settle into the day. So give yourself a lot of time um, and allow your body to be a little bit sleepy if it will. But now we're going to do a bit of walking meditation until lunchtime. So uh, if you all have enough warm clothes, I would definitely encourage you to maybe go outside and uh, use this area just behind the hall. There's a door in the middle here and there's one in the kitchen and apparently you can go also through the car park and around the side and uh, get a bit of fresh air. And uh, my encouragement is just to keep on noticing these qualities, be a little bit patient or rigid, uh, anxious, maybe judging. Just notice those things arising as they arise and encourage the mind to just embrace, to open to whatever experience is there in front of you. And in this way, whatever your actual subjective experience, you always have a way of responding that can soften those things down. So who knows how to do walking meditation? If there is a way, <laughs> who has done walking meditation before? Yeah. Most of you. So it's just an encouragement to use the same attitudes to, uh, that we have been doing in the sitting practice in the walking posture. And the walking posture can be very powerful as a way of um, continuing mindfulness. So it's not just a kind of fill-in practice, but it's something that can bring the practice more into every day, of every moment of our life. Because most of the time in busy lives, we're not uh, sitting down meditating with our eyes closed. We're actually moving from place to place. And so the walking can be a way to collect and recollect uh, the mindfulness practice in our day-to-day -day life and also on retreat. It can be a way of um, maintaining the continuity. So the difference mainly with the uh, sitting practice is that now you're becoming more aware of the body while it's moving. And naturally, the places that your attention will probably gravitate to are parts of the body that move. So it can be as limited as just the sensations in the soles of your feet if your mind wants to um, go into that the body as it moves so see what your mind needs from time to time if your mind and uh, narrow then it might be nice to notice the whole body in the moving mode or at least the legs as they move if you feel that the mind is you know enjoying coming becoming more collected becoming you know settling down then you might find that it gives you more still to just allow the mind to sink into the feet and to feel those feet as they move. So usually we take an area that's not too, uh, too big. It's just a narrow sort of stretch. So in here, I would suggest that people walk in one direction, like the, the width ways, and you just take a path, like an imaginary path, and you have a start and a finish, and you walk from one side to the next of this little stretch of grass. There's a bit of grass outside at the front as well. So the same principle can apply or there's some quiet streets just down the road. So just take one stretch of maybe 10 steps or something and walk in a very relaxed way, but uh, in a quite a natural way. So not too slow that the body gets kind of tense and tight, just uh, slow enough that you can start to feet and all the different sensations in the feet as they move. So. Um, you can weird, but I want to anyway, because <laughs> one of my teachers actually practiced that for for quite a while until she became like a a kind of fairly a, a teacher herself. Actually, I think she was practicing mostly as a student, and then when she became <laughs> what she used to do actually was a, a practice she learned in Thailand from a particular monastery where they would like lift one hand and just raise it very slowly with their eyes closed as they were seated and experience all the sensations in the hand and then lower the hand down and experience all the sensations as it was lowering as well. So actually, I think this could be quite useful for people that maybe have problems in their knees or 
even if you're um, cold and you don't really want to go outside, you could do this in the same you know. <laughs> Even weird than, weirder than the walking meditators. I've done it a few times, not many. Uh, the feeling that it brings to the mind. It me of the breath. The breath coming in, the breath going in. It's just another little technique you could try if you wish. And just keeping your awareness in that area. You can get very sensitive there. So you can soften into that as well. The thing is, the softer the mind, the more receptive the mind, the more we feel that's going on. So we don't need you know, to do very much. So anyway, see what works for you. We've got about uh, 25 minutes. And then about 12 o'clock, uh, you'll have your lunch. Hopefully you've all brought something to eat with you. And uh, I guess it might be warmest to have it in here. Is that okay for them to have it in here? But try and maintain the silence because it's already developing and it feels very protective, very, uh, very safe together in silence. We don't have to be anybody or introduce ourselves to anybody. We can just really let all that go. And I will see you back at about one o'clock. Um, so you have quite a nice long lunch break. Um, I don't mind if you want to rest. I mean, it's not super comfy on the floor, but you could curl up on your cushion a bit or, or whatever, go for a walk. So just take the time you need to, to do whatever's resourcing for you. And I'll see you back at one o'clock for a bit more reflection and guidance. Okay.